So as a home cook, by far the meal that I rely on the most on a weekly basis is pasta. And it seems like a lot of you agree with that statement. And the reason for this, at least for me, is that pasta is quick and easy to make. It is very filling, but most importantly, it is extremely easy to customize, which is crucial in this ongoing game to avoid takeout at all costs. We gotta keep things exciting in the kitchen. And I have created hundreds, if not thousands of pasta dishes over the years for myself and my family. And the reason I've been able to do this is because of one specific pasta formula, which if you follow and you really study these techniques, I can guarantee that you'll be able to make an unlimited variety of quick and easy pastas for the rest of your life. So the first half of this video is gonna be breaking down this formula right here. Then I'll show you how it works in action with three different pasta dishes. And the very first piece of this formula, the first decision you have to make as a home cook is what type of pasta you're gonna use. Now, outside of pasta being delicious, I do think one of the biggest reasons it's so popular for home cooking is because of this instantaneous variety you get from choosing different pasta styles and shapes and colors and flavors. Without you doing any cooking at all, you already have this amazing selection of variety to keep things interesting, which gives it a leg up on so many other meals out there. Now, traditionally, certain pasta shapes and sizes work better with certain sauces, but for this video, I'm giving you permission to just use whatever's inspiring, whatever you have in the pantry. For me, when I'm shopping, I like to get a few different varieties and just have them in the pantry so I can just pop it open and say, okay, this looks good. Let's start with that. In the end, we're trying to produce a meal here. It's all pasta. And there are so many different brands. <laughs> There's so many different styles. It's fun to try out new shapes and sizes. There's now a ton of great gluten-free options on the market, which for me is very important because I eat a lot of bread already. So that tends to balance the wheat intake out a little bit. So stock your pantry, pick your pasta, and we're moving on. Now, the next piece of this formula, the next decision you're making on your pasta journey is do you want protein in your pasta or do you want to keep it veggie? vegetarian. Now you got to remember today we are focusing on quick pastas. You get home from work and you just want to whip something up for a weeknight meal. So to do that, if you're going to add a meat, you want something that's going to cook quick, like a piece of sausage or some bacon or pancetta. And also these types of proteins, when rendered out, you can remove the crispy goodness and then you have built in fat and flavor at the base of your pasta, which is a huge bonus. Now when talking about seafood, we're not getting any extra fat from rendering, but you still want to think about things that cook quickly like clams or shrimp or scallops. Things that can cook quickly and develop a ton of flavor in a short period of time is going to be key. Now, if you want to keep it vegetarian, just wait a minute. We will cover that in a second. All right, the next decision on your pasta journey are aromatics. The key to really building out a good base to your sauce is developing that nice aromatic aroma and flavor. And we can do this with different aromatic veggies. Now, this could be as simple as sauteing some garlic in some olive oil. Maybe you wanna step it up a little bit and get some sweetness in there with some onions and garlic. Or you can get a little bit adventurous, break out of the box a little bit and maybe try some fennel or some carrots or celery in there. These might take a little bit longer to cook down, but if you slice them thin, it's a great way to add additional flavor to your sauce and keep things interesting. For me, it all depends on my mood. It depends on what I have in the fridge or the garden. And it depends on the sauce that I am making, which brings us into the next piece of this formula. Let's get saucy, baby. So the next piece of this formula is a big decision. Now, when I'm making a quick pasta, there are three sauce options that I'm going with 99% of the time. The first one I'm calling a light sauce. Now, this would typically be built out with either, say, some white wine or some stock. In most cases, for me, it's chicken stock because that's what I make the most of. That's what I have in the freezer, in the fridge. And this is gonna help create body in our sauce while still keeping things light. And when you pair that with some aromatics, plus maybe a little hit of some pasta water to thicken things up, you've got a delicious sauce. Now, 
the second option is tomato or marinara, a tomato-based pasta sauce. And there's a few ways to accomplish this. You have, of course, great canned tomato options. And since we're developing flavor quickly, we're not cooking things down for a long time, you really wanna get a high quality canned tomato product. You can always use fresh cherry tomatoes. I've shown you that technique, which packs a punch of flavor by just cooking them for a short period of time. Or the last option, maybe you made some of your own sauce. You can some up or you froze some. It's funny because I get so sick of tomatoes by the end of the tomato growing season. And then right now in the end of winter, I am just decimating my stash of frozen tomato sauce. And finally, the third sauce option is an herb-based sauce, like a pesto. But traditionally, when people think of pesto, they think about the classic basil and pine nut pesto. And the truth is there are so many different pestos from different regions of Italy that use different ingredients. And if you're gonna choose an herb sauce, hone in on that concept. You don't have to be stuck to just the standard. You can use different fresh herbs, you can use different nuts. There's a lot of different combinations to keep things interesting. So up next on the pasta formula are the addition of veggies. Not your aromatics, but to really bulk this up, you always have the option at home to add on veggies, which for me is happening most of the time because pasta, it's starch, it's carbs, and it's sauce. So to make this a viable weeknight meal, like on the regular, adding veggies just completes the nutritional balance of things or helps out with it. And when making a quick pasta, there's a few main ways that I add veggies, which is one, by blanching them right in the boiling pasta water. Such a great technique, then you just incorporate the blanched veggies into the pasta after you've made the sauce. Another good method is simultaneously roasting a veggie on the side, say in your air fryer or your oven, in order to save that stovetop space. And then you can just incorporate those delicious roasted veggies right into your pasta. And finally, if it's something quick cooking, you could just throw it in raw, let it cook into the sauce, or you could take some frozen veggies out, like some peas or corn, pop those right into your sauce, bulks things up a little bit, and it keeps it interesting. And the final piece to this pasta formula, the last decision you have to make is your garnish, which could be just some fresh herbs sprinkled on to lighten things up, to freshen up your pasta. But I'm also including cheese in this garnish section. So that's when you're grating on your Parmesan to give it a little salty, creamy kick or whatever cheese you have on hand. Some people do this when the pasta is plated right on top. When I'm making a big portion, I tend to do it to my entire portion and just cream a fire everything and give it that extra delicious kick. All right, now that you understand this pasta formula, it's time to put it into action. But first, since so many of you have really connected to these quick meals over the years, the 15 minute meal series has been by far my most successful series on this channel. But a lot of you have been asking for the actual recipes. So what I've done is I've compiled the greatest hits together into a book and it's completely free. So if you're interested in being one of the first people to get the 15 minute cookbook, click the link below in the description or right above here and you can download a free copy so you can have an actual companion when you're in the kitchen to keep you inspired, keep you pumping out quick, delicious meals throughout the week. Now we can make some pasta. So for pasta one, I made a tomato sauce with crispy pork belly. And the first decision was the pasta. I went with the cascatelli that's from Svoglini, a Brooklyn founded pasta company. And for the protein decision, I was rummaging through my freezer and I actually found some pork belly that I believe I cooked in an air fryer video a few months ago. I had some extra. So I defrosted that and I chopped that up into little pieces and got that rendering off in a pan. You can of course use bacon and pancetta for the same effect. And once it was nice and crispy, I removed it, leaving that render fat. And then for the aromatics, I went with one chopped small sweet onion and a bunch of sliced garlic. And I cooked that until it was nice and soft and caramelized. For the sauce, I went in the tomato direction with a can of whole peeled tomatoes, which I added right to the aromatics along with some water so it could cook down a bit. And I used this masher to break up those whole tomatoes and just let that simmer for about five to 10 minutes. Now for the additional veggie, when I was rummaging through the freezer, I also found some frozen kale that I picked fresh in the summer. And since we're deep into the winter, it's time to start using this stuff up. So I actually blanched it in the pasta water for about one minute and then added in the pasta to get that boiling. I transferred the kale into cold water, then I removed all of that water and 
chopped it up. And when the sauce had reduced, I seasoned it up. I added back the pork belly along with the kale, along with the cooked pasta, which was finished, as well as some of that pasta water just to get the perfect sauce consistency. And I would generally garnish a tomato pasta like this with some Parmesan, but I found these cured egg yolks that were hanging in my fridge for months, which will give me a similar effect to Parmesan, adding a little creaminess, a little salty finish, and boom, pasta one done. So for pasta two, the first decision being the pasta, I chose tagliatelle, which I got boiling right away. For my protein option, I'm going with these little shrimps that are wild caught, but they were frozen. So I defrosted them and seasoned them up with salt and pepper. And I got my pan on a medium heat, added in some olive oil and got those shrimps frying off, which only took about a minute since they were so tiny. I removed the shrimp and for my aromatic choice, I kept it really simple with four cloves of sliced up garlic that went right into the same pan in the same oil. And I cooked the garlic until those aromas just filled the entire kitchen. And then for the sauce, I'm going with a light sauce. In this case, some white wine to pair nicely with those shrimp. I dumped in about two cups of white wine and ignited that up and just let that reduce by about half, which I then added a little bit of butter to just enhance the richness of this sauce, plus a little bit of salt and pepper to season. Now for the veggie addition, I found some frozen corn in the freezer, which might sound a little bit weird, but the sweetness and texture is a great addition to this pasta. So I added that right to the sauce and just let that heat up. And when the sauce was looking perfect, the noodles went right into the sauce, which left me to my final decision of the garnish, which was some parsley chopped up super fine to lighten things up. And when I tasted the pasta, it definitely needed a little bit of salt and it was also slightly dry. So I grated in some Parmesan for a salty kick and added a little bit of pasta water for just pure perfection. So for this final pasta, I'm starting out with a fusilli that is completely gluten-free, which I'll get boiling right away. And this pasta is completely vegetarian, so no protein here, we're skipping that. And we're moving on to the aromatics. So I added some olive oil to a pan, and I'm just going in with a bunch of thinly sliced fennel, which I'll be frying off with some salt, of course, until this fennel is super sweet and nice and brown. Now for the sauce, I'm going with a really simple herb sauce. So I added parsley and basil to a food processor, along with a clove of garlic, some almonds, a little bit of apple cider vinegar because I was out of lemon. And I blended that up, emulsifying in olive oil and water until it was nice and smooth. The pasta was finished, so I dumped that in over the cooked fennel. And for the veggie decision, well, even though we got a bunch of snow, the greenhouse is still going strong. So I picked a whole bunch of spinach that I blanched in boiling water for just about 30 seconds. And then to bring everything together, I added the herb sauce to the pasta with some of that blanched spinach and it was a little dry, so it needed some pasta water as well. And then finally for the garnish, I hit it with a healthy supply of Parmesan and let all of those flavors really just mend in the pan for just another minute or so. So obviously there are so many pasta techniques, this doesn't cover everything, but hopefully this formula just gives you a little bit of confidence to stay creative, stay inspired with those quick weeknight pasta dishes. And remember to click this link right here for your free download of my 15 minute cookbook.